Hey everybody, welcome back for another deep dive. Um, today, we are going to be looking at something that I think a lot of us have probably experienced at one point or another in our lives. Mm -hmm. That uh, sort of blurry line between friendship and romance. Yeah. And uh, to really get into it, we're going to be using Tori Spelling and Brian Austin Green as a case study. Okay. You know them as Don and David from 90210. Right, right. And while they were a super iconic couple on screen, absolutely, their real life dynamic is even more interesting. Yeah, especially because they've both been giving all these candid interviews recently, uh -huh. and so it really makes you wonder: Can these intense, almost familial friendships sometimes actually evolve into something more? Yeah, and what makes these relationships so complex? Well, you know, it is really interesting, isn't it? The way those lines can get blurred. I mean, a lot of people have that experience of being in the friend zone where you're not really sure, is this just friendship or is there something more going on here? And if you think about it, a lot of the qualities that we look for in good friends, you know, shared values, vulnerability, inside jokes, that kind of deep understanding, mm -hmm. those are also the same qualities that can fuel romantic attraction. So it's easy to see how those lines can get crossed, especially in a relationship that's as intense as the one that Tori and Brian described. Yeah. Absolutely. And speaking of intensity, there's this one story Tori tells about a Disneyland trip that really stood out to me. Okay. Apparently, they spent the whole day like bickering back and forth, mm -hmm. which sounds pretty typical for them. Yeah. But they're in line for the Matterhorn. Mm -hmm. And Tori finally like turns to Brian. She's like, why are we always fighting like this? Oh, wow. And his response is, have you ever thought that maybe I fight with you because I love you? Oh, my God. And according to Tori, they kissed right there in line, mm -hmm. and then they left the park together. It's a uh. total 90s teen movie moment, right? That's amazing. But here's where it gets crazy. Brian says he doesn't remember any of this happening. Oh, wow. How is that even possible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could they really have such completely different memories of the exact same event? Yeah, well, it's definitely possible. And, you know, it really comes down to, I think, the fact that human memory is a lot more complicated than we tend to give it credit for. Okay. You know, we think of memory as being like, a video recording you just press play and it's all right there but it's really not like that at all memory is much more of a reconstruction mm -hmm. and it's influenced by all kinds of things yeah. our emotions later experiences and even what we want to remember oh interesting you know there's actually a cognitive bias called rosy retrospection where we tend to look back on past events more positively than they actually were oh wow so that might be playing a role in how tori is remembering that day but you also have to remember that they were young you know, it was Disneyland, so they might have been, you know, having some adult beverages. And they were working in this very public, high-pressure environment. So all of those factors could have really contributed to them having different memories of that day. You know, it wouldn't be at all surprising if they each remembered different elements or if their memories were kind of colored by their own individual perspective and feelings. So even if the Disneyland thing is a little fuzzy, mm -hmm. Brian does admit that he and Tori hooked up multiple times. Okay. But when he's asked to define the relationship, he uses this really interesting phrase. Mm. He says it was more than dating. More than dating. What do you think he means by that? Yeah. I mean, what does he mean to be more than dating? Right. It really makes you think about those friendships that have these romantic elements, mm -hmm. but they never really cross that line into an actual relationship. Yeah, that's such a great point. And it's so interesting that he uses that phrase more than dating because it really does suggest a depth of connection that goes beyond casual dating, but doesn't quite fit the typical definition of a romantic relationship either. So maybe for Brian, it signified a bond that was just really hard to label. You know, that it was this kind of gray area where friendship and romantic feelings coexisted. Mm -hmm. And it makes you wonder how much weight do we really give to those labels anyway? Yeah. Do we actually need them to make sense of our relationships? Or can we just kind of embrace the ambiguity and appreciate the connections for what they are, even if they don't fit into a neat little box? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's so fascinating how language can both clarify and complicate things, right? Yeah. We try to use these words to put our experiences into neat little boxes, mm -hmm. but sometimes those experiences just kind of spill over the edges, you know? Right. And that's where you get this tension. Like when Brian l later refers to his bond with Tori as being like family, and Tori's response is so funny. She's like, you don't sleep with your family. Yeah. But it really highlights how those labels carry certain societal expectations. And sometimes those expectations clash with the actual reality of what we're feeling yeah it really makes you think 
are we too quick to label our relationships? Yeah. You know, maybe there's a whole spectrum of intimacy that we don't even fully acknowledge because we're so focused on fitting everything into these categories, yeah. you know, friend, lover, family. Exactly. And it's especially interesting to think about this in the context of Tori and Brian's lives, you know, because they both went on to have very public marriages and families. Mm -hmm. So do you think these past almost relationships ever truly disappear mm. or do they kind of become part of who we are and how we connect with others? That's such a good question. And I think it really gets to the heart of how we develop our understanding of intimacy and connection. You know, because even if a relationship doesn't ultimately turn into a romantic one, those deep bonds that we forge, those shared experiences, the vulnerabilities that we've exposed, mm -hmm. those things absolutely shape us. They become part of the tapestry of our lives and they can influence how we approach future relationships. You yeah. know, the kind of partners that we're drawn to and even the way that we end up parenting our own children. Right. It's like each relationship, whether it's romantic or platonic, just adds a new layer to our emotional landscape yeah. and shakes the terrain of our hearts. You know, it's funny because our culture tends to put so much emphasis on romantic love. Absolutely. Like we're constantly bombarded with messages about finding the one, yeah. getting married, having that fairy tale ending. Right. But maybe we're kind of selling ourselves short by <laughs> focusing so narrowly on one type of love. Mm -hmm. What about the deep platonic love that we have for our friends, the love yeah. between siblings, the love between parents and children? Yeah. Shouldn't we be celebrating those forms of love just as much? Absolutely. And I think sometimes those different types of love can actually intertwine mm -hmm. in really beautiful and unexpected ways. And, uh -huh. you know, as we've been talking about with Tori and Brian, those lines can be really blurry yeah. and maybe that's okay. You know, yeah. maybe it's in those gray areas where the definitions sort of fail us mm -hmm. that we discover the most profound connections. Right. It forces us to question our assumptions and really expand our understanding of what love can look like. Yeah. It's like we're always trying to fit these squares into circles. You yeah. Know? We have these predefined ideas about what relationships are supposed to look like. And then when we encounter something that doesn't quite fit the mold, it throws us off. Exactly. But maybe that's where the real magic is. Yeah. In those relationships that challenge our assumptions and make us think outside the box. Yeah. And I think it's important to remember that relationships are dynamic. You know, they're mm -hmm. always evolving. And what starts as a friendship could develop into something more. Mm -hmm. Or it could just remain this really solid source of support and companionship throughout our lives. You know, yeah. there's no right or wrong way for a relationship to unfold. Yeah. And I think the beauty is in just embracing that journey and appreciating the unique connection that we share with each person in our lives. I think this whole conversation has really highlighted just how important it is mm. to be open to different kinds of love. Yeah. You know, to yeah. appreciate those nuances of connection and to challenge those societal norms that try to dictate how we should experience relationships. Absolutely. It's about giving ourselves permission to explore those gray areas. Mm -hmm. You know, to be okay with the messiness and to value those connections that enrich our life, regardless of how they're labeled. Yeah. Maybe it's in those undefined spaces that we actually discover the most authentic and fulfilling relationships. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. I'm gonna leave you with this thought. Okay. What if we just let go of the need to categorize everything? Mm -hmm. What if we embraced the complexity and celebrated that unique tapestry of connections that make up each of our lives? Yeah. Maybe then we could really open ourselves up to a whole new world of love and understanding. Beautifully said. You know, just embrace the messiness, celebrate those nuances, mm -hmm. and allow yourself to be surprised by the unexpected ways in which love can show up. Thanks for joining us on this journey. And until next time, keep exploring those fascinating gray areas of life and love. Mm -hmm.